Another great show brought to you through the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Law of Attraction Talk Radio is now celebrating its fifth year in broadcasting. Through it all, you and I have expanded our awareness and joy to great heights. Join us for another five years of empowering our lives through the understanding of the universal law of attraction. Let our happiness and well-being continue to ripple out to the rest of the world. Stay tuned for another great show of Law of Attraction Talk Radio with Jules. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could join us. We've got a great, great, great show for you tonight. You know, a few years back, maybe about three or four, actually, I had a gentleman on, actually a young a young man by the name of Corey Love. Well, just a few weeks ago at the Law of Attraction Spiritual Center, uh, my friend Judy came up to me and she says, wow, I remember Core Love. Why not bring him back on? Because he's doing incredible things right now. And I thought, hmm, that's a great idea. So I contacted Core Love and uh, he accepted to come on and share his incredible knowledge with all of you wonderful listeners. So I want you to sit back, relax, because tonight is a very, very fascinating show. It's about energy. It's about sacred G. It's about, you name it, chemicals in the brain. Oh my goodness, you're going to love it. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after these words. Are you still struggling on how to get the Law of Attraction to work for you? Dr. David Che's book, Total Law of Attraction, was designed to bring about greater clarity using quantum physics. Recently featured on NBC, Fox News, and many newspapers across the U.S., Dr. Che reveals key information that has often been overlooked. It's available for your iPad and can also be found on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Buy it today at TotalLawOfAttraction.com. That's www.TotalLawOfAttraction.com. Total Law of Attraction is the book that you have been waiting for. You are listening to your daily dose of well-being and inspiration on Law of Attraction Radio Network at LOARadioNetwork.com. Hear this incredible show on your smartphone through Stitcher.com, which goes through your car stereos with Ford Sync or any auto dashboard that has the Internet. Listen to our 24-7 broadcast with our mobile app as well, or just listen through an MP3 player or computer. Remember, LOARadioNetwork.com, heard in over 120 countries, is the radio station for your well-being. Well, welcome back. You know, I'm not really going to go into a lot of announcements because tonight's show has so much information that I think you really need to know about. Core Love has had such a fascinating life, and it's a life that only he can explain. But it's all about energy, it's about sacred G, it's about near-death experiences, it's about really understanding the chemicals of the brain. You're going to be absolutely fascinated. So uh, so let's just get on. And I know that you are going to help me welcome this wonderful, wonderful, magnificent person by the name of Core Love. Okay. Well, welcome, Core, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm so glad to see you back again. Oh, it's so great to be back here. <laughs> it's been years. And as I was telling you before that I had a fan come to the Law of Attraction Spiritual Center and said, I haven't heard from Core Love. What is he going to, what is he doing? I'd really love to hear from him. So I thought, oh, yes, I've got to find a way to contact him. And here you are. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good place to kick off and to uh, help my friend Judy understand what's going on. So... Tell me, what have you been doing? You got married, you moved to L Las Vegas, you set up a huge thing going on. So tell us what's going on. 
Yeah, we. Um, oh man, there's been so much that's uh, that's happened in the last couple of years since I was on the show. Uh, you know, we actually went for a, a 10 month uh, love activation world tour, and uh, we set up this uh, this amazing uh, school called the Love University, and the school's essentially all online, and it's all about like energy healing and training and. More so even than just healing, it's about how to activate the body and start turning on the higher senses. So, you know, mo most likely I was talking about sacred G technology when I was on the show before. And, uh, you know, how I learned this technology through these near-death experiences. And, wow. you know, what I found was, you know, the way that I use the technology and the way that it affects me is so much different than the way that it was affecting other people. And so what I started to realize was it was the more open people were uh, – already, you know, by doing a lot of self-development work and opening themselves up and studying the law of attraction and, and uh, how nature works. It was like them attuning their brain to it. And uh, once they got to that certain point and they start sleeping on this technology, it's like the technology just comes in and takes everything to the next level. So I was couldn't figure out why there was such a difference from people, you know, because everything runs off math and physics. So why is it that some people can't really feel it and don't really notice a lot of change? And so I started talking to the people who didn't really notice anything. And, you know, as I talked to them, well, they started noticing, you know, everything that was actually changing. They just weren't connecting it in their brain because they weren't really self-aware. And so I thought, well, what, what brings us self-aware? How do people actually connect with themselves and know themselves so well on the inside that as soon as, you know, all these little things start changing in their life, they, they actually realize, hey, wait a sec, these little things didn't change before. And, you know, none of these shifts were happening in my life before, and now they're actually happening. So people who are very self-aware, you know, can pick up everything that's going on with the technology. They know that they're going through the cleanses. They can feel when they're going through emotional purges, and all of a sudden they get a bunch of information downloads afterwards, you know, because they know that process. If you do that healing work, all of a sudden you're getting insights and you're getting direction. That kind of starts that magical journey. So it was uh, once I figured that out, then I was like, well, we, you know, I got to build something. And so I essentially built this love university as uh, almost like an instruction manual for how to use this technology. And so it's all focused on how to unlock the body, how to open up the senses, you know, how to, um, you know, train your physical body and how to open up that energy flow so you can start feeling what's going on with other people's bodies. And as soon as you can kind of like, I always say that there's this, uh, this underlying conversation that happens between the human bodies, you know, one body's talking to another body, but it's a conversation that the majority of us are just completely unaware of. We just think that we have this conversation happening on a surface level, but there's a whole nother conversation happening between the bodies. And as soon as we turn on our senses, we can open up to these conversations and we can find out what's really going on underneath. So that was uh, so that was like a really really big project. So we spent about a year developing these courses. We've got uh, this one course called Energy Training, and it's about 88 hours of uh, video. That's all energy. So you're like learning how to transfer it, pass it back and forth, and uh, you're building like balls of uh, energy and walking them through the, the this process. Next thing you know, they convert to light, and your hands are like moving back and forth by themselves, and you're like. You know, people start learning it, they're freaking out because most people, you know, they hear about energy, but they're not really sure how to interact with it. And if they're like, if they do, it's so subtle, but we figured out how to like, you know, train people. So they're like right in it. They can yeah. feel the actual shells and, That's you know, That's really so, great. Oh yeah. It's been so much fun. So we, uh, we got this big RV and then we got it wrapped, you know, and it, it's, uh, you know, all these crazy colors around the sides and it's got big With sacred G technology on sacred it. Sacred G. So let me ask you about the sacred G because mm -hmm. doesn't it have the same technology as a, or isn't it like the tetrahedra, the mathematical formula that everything is really based on everything in this yeah. universe? Yeah. Yeah, and we essentially call it laws of vibrational energy, or love for short. And um, vibration is so amazing because most most people study, you know, uh, health, and health comes down to nutrition, and uh, you know your emotional state, and whether your thoughts are serving you or working against you, and then of course how much you work out and exercise. But underneath all of that is a system of vibration. So the food that you eat 
there's a vibration inside of it. So when that, when your body breaks down that food and it passes it into the cells inside the, uh, inside the proteins and the nutrients, there's instructions for how the cells are supposed to use this energy. And depending on those stru- instructions, some of those instructions are, you know, slow the body's energy down and, and activate the thoughts. Other instructions are, you know, slow the thoughts down and activate the body, get the body in motion and moving. And so these, there's like instructions that's inside, and those are essentially what we call vibrations or vibrational energy. So when you change the vibrations of your food, the food affects you differently. You can uh, use this sacred G technology, and it'll actually clean water. And so you can take tap water, put it on one of these sacred G designs, and next thing you know, the water is like, it tastes better. And you're like, well, what, what happened? Where did, where did all that, you know, where did the chemical toxicity in the water go? And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's really amazing how it can affect everything in this way. So, so it is based on the mathematical formula of tetrahedra, which, mm-hmm. which is the common uh, building basis for all of us and every object in, on this planet. So now, how did you get this? Because you developed it quite a few years ago. Yeah. How did you get this download of information? Why? Tell me a little bit, and I want you to <laughs> share what really went on with you for all of our new listeners who may not have heard the last broadcast. Oh, that that's like on. that's like opening up a big old can of worms there. <laughs> 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 but it's so fascinating. Um, you know, I've got a very unique story. Um, it's very interesting. You know, I typically actually don't share it a lot, you know, except when except when I'm involved with, with work because, uh, you know, most people are kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but it, it's very interesting. So when I was uh, 10 years old, I got into this um, – into a car accident with my brother and my grandma. And so I was only 10 and my little brother was seven and it was a pretty serious car accident. We were turning off the highway and we basically got T-boned by another truck that was, you know, was driving about 70 miles an hour. And so the only thing between the the truck and my brother was basically the car door and the grill, right, of the truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just got slammed and my little brother ended up uh, dying at the scene. Uh, They gave him uh, a bystander, actually, lucky enough, came by and gave him a mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and got him breathing until the paramedics got there. And he was uh, rushed up to the the, uh, hospital in the bigger city, Calgary, and went under about 72 hours of reconstructive surgery. They had to take, like, part of his hip bone and put it into his skull, and he had, like, a ton of stitches on the inside and outside. His jaw was completely shattered. Uh, he was only seven years old, but he had to relearn everything all over again. So how to read, write, do his math. So basically he had to start from scratch and he had to do it with his uh, left side of his body because his whole right side of his body was paralyzed. Okay. So it was, uh, it was pretty intense. Um, as far as I went, um, you know, there wasn't really anything major. I actually ended up having an out of body experience. So I was basically sitting above the, the vehicles you know, after the accident and, uh, I was just looking down and I started to panic and, uh, this guy kind of came in and sat beside me, which is interesting because I'm like way up in the air. (laughs) It's like sitting on a cloud. Right. And, uh, he's like, he's like, Oh, don't worry. You'll be back soon. And I was like, Oh, okay. And, and, And that was it. You know, it was good, but there was a sensation and a feeling of like, you know, as I was out, like, Whoa, what's going on? You know, because I'm looking down at the accident and uh, my little brother actually had a near-death experience too, as well at the exact same time. And um, so that was uh, that was like the start of it. But overall, there wasn't really too much wrong with me. Um, my brain actually was ble- bleeding. So the actual chances of me surviving was, was practically nothing. Um, and they didn't think either of us were actually going to live. So, um, but overall, there wasn't really too much wrong with me. And what was interesting, though, is that after the car accident, when I came back uh, home, uh, I didn't hang out with any of the same friends. I, my little brother, who was like my best friend, it's like we didn't really talk or connect. I didn't talk or connect with anybody in my family. And uh, all my friends changed. So I was like a completely different person. 
except I didn't realize that I was a completely different person. I was just like, look, that's just the way I am now. <laughs> you know, leave me alone. Stop asking so many questions. <laughs> And so they uh, eventually they, my parents took me to a psychologist to make sure I was doing okay because I never once cried about the car accident. I was never upset. I didn't ask questions about it. You know, nothing. It was I was just like calm and be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's fine. And so it was about four years after the accident that I started to realize something was wrong with my brain, and that my brain wasn't functioning the same way that my it was for my friends. And I didn't really know what it was, so I kind of just like I was watching for it. And it took about six months, but eventually I realized it, and I was like, I I don't have a memory. I can't remember anything from before my car accident. So when I went to the psychologist and she started asking me all these questions, I I started freaking out, and eventually I started just screaming at her, and I like stormed out of the room. But I didn't really connect it because she was asking me questions and all of a sudden my brain was overloading and I, I didn't know what to say or what to do. So I just like lost it and like stormed out of the room and I'm like, I'm never going back there. <laughs> so four years after this, after this car accident, I started putting together the pieces. And so once I got it, I, I ran home and I looked at all the photo albums and I'm looking at them. And I don't remember any pictures. I don't recognize the person, like even who I am in the pictures. And it all hits me at once that, oh my, I can't remember anything that happened to me from before the car accident. And so I started kind of panicking and freaking out. And then I kept watching and I realized that after about three days, I couldn't recall any experience that had happened in my life. And so I was literally like locked into the moment, you know, which is what a lot of people talk about with law of attraction. You gotta, you gotta get in the moment because that's where you thrive. And in all honesty, I did thrive. I was always happy. Every, nothing bothered me. I was just like, everything was like fresh and new. And uh, I started noticing, well, if it was a long weekend at school, I'd come back and I wouldn't remember what I did. And so if we were reading like a story in English class, I'd, I'd come back and I wouldn't, I wouldn't recognize the story or anything. So I just started taking zeros all over the place. And I became super panicked because I watched how my little brother, you know, he was very, you know, uh, he lost all of his friends. He couldn't keep up. I mean, he was paralyzed and he was in a wheelchair for a while. And eventually through physiotherapy, he got out of the wheelchair and he could walk with a limp, but his arm was completely seized up. It never, ever came back. It was stuck like this um, for over 10 years. It was stuck like that. So I kind of watched how his social life completely collapsed and I was freaking out because that was the only thing that I had. So I knew instantly it's like, Shh, don't say anything. Don't talk about anything. Don't let anybody know what's going on with your brain because as soon as that happens, everything's going to collapse just like it did with my brother. Oh my. And so it kind of became this quest to like hide what was actually going on with my brain, but I kept kind of studying it and figuring out. And so, uh, you know, when people talk about being in a moment, you know, they're, they're thinking about this, this thriving moment, you know, where everything is like happening and they're happy. But I started to find that there's an opposite moment and an opposite moment is these points where my brain would go into and it would become so in the moment that I'd lose all the high access to the higher centers in my brain. And uh, I couldn't recognize anything or anybody. And so what started to happen was as soon as I made a mistake, instead of just brushing it off because it's all good, I started thinking, well, how many times have I made this mistake before? And I couldn't remember. I couldn't pull it up. So I couldn't gauge how angry somebody was at me or if they were just kind of like really angry but not saying anything about it. And I, so my brain started to attack itself. And typically memory will stabilize that because your brain says, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. You know, you guys got a great friendship and a great relationship. You hang out all the time. This is just something stupid. Let it go. But my brain didn't have that. So my brain couldn't stabilize. So all of a sudden within a couple of days, it was like I was going crazy because now everybody in the whole world hated me and I was better off not being there. And, um, you know, I'd be just better off if basically I was dead and, uh, so it would happen. It would spiral out of control, you know, sometimes within hours. And then my brain would flip and it would be going, well, why should I die? Maybe it's everybody else's that should die. Why, why am I the one who has to, like, take myself out? And so my brain would flip almost into a psychosis. And it was typically within about another 20 to 30 minutes from that point where my brain would really start to break down. And it would just keep surging and it would pull up all this information and uh, and it's like the whole world around me started to attack attack 
and um, essentially my, my brain would uh, overload all these higher centers and my brain regions would stop. And uh, depending where I was, if there was people around or anything, my brain wouldn't actually be able to recognize them. I couldn't recognize the surroundings. I couldn't recognize the people. Uh, I didn't know what was happening. And my brain would all of a sudden, it like because the higher centers would shut down, my brain would go into almost like this animalistic behavior. And, uh, you know, I got a real good memory of when I was at my house with, with my girlfriend who I'd been with for a couple of years and my brain couldn't recognize her and this is happening in front of her. And she's scared, so she's trying to come closer to help me, but my body is like acting like this animal and it's cowering in the corner and it's growling at her. And uh, because all these animalistic behaviors are coming out and if she tried to get them close, my hands would like go in the claws and, <laughs> and they'd like swat at her like as, like as if my body was a dog or a cat. And I'm, the, I'm just watching this and I'm already at this third perspective because I'm not even in my body anymore when this is happening. And um, next thing you know, like I'd just be in that corner, I'd be shaking. If she came close, my body would swat at her and make noise like I was like a wild animal, you know. It was really weird to see wow. my body do that. But the cool thing was that I wasn't really attached to it because I was, I was almost like outside of it watching. So I got to learn about how the body works and, and how the brain works and how all these different layers of the brain, you know, layer on top of each other to really make us human and, uh, and different from, from these animals. And um, wow. so next, next thing you know, I go into these like uh, paralysis states where my brain would keep overloading up to a point where it would just become paralyzed, you know, like paralyzed. And all of a sudden I just start losing consciousness and I'd wake up and I wouldn't know where I am and panicked. And then I'd calm down. I'd be like, you know, and, you know, and I'd be freaking out. But it only last for like a minute or two and then I'd be back like passing out again. And uh, then I'd go into like a full paralysis where I couldn't actually move my body anymore. And all my senses would start shutting down. I wouldn't be able to see. My eyes would go blurry. Anybody was talking was all muffled. And I couldn't make out what anybody was saying. And then my lungs and my organs would start to shut down. And I'd be fighting for, like, my last breath. Oh my and all my focus and concentration would be just simply, can you know, can I breathe? And eventually I had didn't have enough energy to push my lungs out anymore. And uh, my body go into this extreme terror that it was dying and then uh, and then I was out and I don't know how long I was out for it was usually about two or three minutes from my girlfriend said I just lay there and then gradually I'd be able to open my eyes and I'd feel this energy streaming in through my body through the top of my head and within about five minutes I was like my senses were starting to turn on but I was still paralyzed I couldn't move within about 10 minutes I could slowly move and I'd try getting up and I'm like crawling Within about 30 minutes, I'm like able to stand up and I'm like, you know, trying to figure out what just happened. But of 45 minutes, my body's surging with so much energy that I'm like not just standing wondering what's happening. My whole body's like moving. Everything's like speed of light and like everything feels so good to move. My eyes start turning on. There's like uh, everything starts turning to color and I can see like light bouncing off of atoms and generating different colors through the air. And I can swirl the gases and mix them up and then watch them settle and gather and collect in like in groups. And, uh, you know, within about an hour, my eyes are all of a sudden switching and all they can see is this grid and this grid that connects us. And it's it's just like the uh, this 3D uh, software, 3D animation software, where you see that 3D oh, yeah. kind of grid that, that maps everything. But that was going everywhere. And my eyes would just blast right through walls. Um, they'd see through the cities and then they'd zoom out into like mountains and stuff. And it, it was just this grid. And there's all these little light, uh, almost like light and iode, like iodes or, or diodes, you know, they're just like light beams that are shooting around all through the grid and I'd see them shoot in through me and I could feel them and they'd shoot out and they'd hit other people. And so I saw how we we're all connected through this massive grid, but I didn't really know what it was. And, uh, you know, everything's so colorful. My whole body's turned on. It's like I went through a complete re reboot. I feel alive, like for the very first time. And, uh, you know, then gradually the energy starts to drop. Yeah. And next thing you know, I'm back to normal and I'm kind of going, what the hell was that? <laughs> and I have no idea what happened, you know? And I'm like, I'm not going to talk about this because I'm going to end up in some crazy place, you know? 
And there's nobody who's going to understand this because I've never heard anything like this. And this is back in, like, 1994, 1995. There wasn't even anything about Indigo Kids. There was nothing about energized water. Even to talk about energy was still, like, really, like, whoa. So I'm like, uh, I'm not talking about any of this. And so these experiences actually started happening in a cycle. It was every five days for about five years I'd go through these. And there was an entire evolution of it and an evolution of my visuals. Eventually, you know, these colors turned into dots and the dots turned into numbers and letters and the numbers and letters would start scrolling everywhere and I could ask them questions and all of a sudden it would stop and it would give me the answer, you know, just in, in the letters. And uh, I'm like... Uh, so when Matrix movie came out and I'm like, no way, those are those letters. They're scrolling everywhere. That's exactly what I saw. And I'm like freaking out. <laughs> and feeling <laughs> v- vindicated. Out. Yeah, I'm like someone, other people have been to this place too. But then the numbers and letters started evolving into actual like shapes and designs. So they were all these like little icons, you know, like the like icons that you see on your computer screen. Some of them were couches, some of them were chairs, the other ones were swords. There was like little sphinxes and they just patterned everywhere. So everything was made up. The eyes were really interesting because it felt like there's a million eyes looking back at you. Um, and then it went from these different shapes and logos to um, to faces. And the faces at first were kind of grotesque and their horns coming out of them and the forehead's big or the jaw's really big or the nose and each side of the face is really big. So it's all these almost like different variations of faces. And as that kind of evolved, eventually they just became like, they became like human faces. And from there, they just started glowing and you could see the light coming off of them. And, you know, I always like to call them the gods and goddesses because they had so much light and everything was like such perfect structure. And uh, then their bodies started coming in and uh, their bodies would be in like perfect 3D. They'd show up in the walls, they'd be in trees, they'd be in the carpet, I'd look down and next thing you know, they're animating and moving. And uh, so there was like this whole visual evolution for how I could actually interact with this energy. It was like all this energy was starting to come alive and take form. Eventually, it reached a point where they'd actually just pop up and they'd visualize right in a room as like full holographic projections. And uh, they could move my body. I could feel them. They'd be like, oh, what's going on in your lower back? And all of a sudden, I'd feel like massaging happening on my muscles. But on my lower back, but it massaged from the inside. Oh. So it's like they were massaging me from the inside now. And I'd look and I could actually see my skin like pushing out as if there was like hands on the inside. Oh, I want that. And uh, <laughs> it was crazy because they give me these like really phenomenal experiences and they're pouring these hot and... Um, You know, when I closed my eyes, I could see everything like it was like this bright liquid crystal color like screen, like virtual interactive screen. But I'd see them walk up. So I'd look at the wall and the walls didn't just stop there. They just go on forever. And there'd be like cities in the background. And all of a sudden somebody would walk up and they'd be like, hey, Cor, how you doing? And they'd be like, why don't you come over here? And when they'd wave me over there, I couldn't just walk through the wall. But next thing you know, my eyes would just close by themselves. And they just uh, it was like they had control over it. And when I close my eyes, all of a sudden, bam, I'm right there. I'm like, oh, this is over here. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Decor, do you think that that you were experiencing the the fourth, fifth, or maybe sixth dimension? Um, well, there was definitely some, uh, some new spaces involved inside this place. Um, eventually, I'd come to learn that it was, it was actually called the, uh, hyperspace, which is a theoretical object. Mm-hmm. And... Um, or a theoretical space. It's still not actually like proven or anything. It's just a theory. And um, so eventually what I figured out happens is there's a a hallucinogenic neurotransmitter that's produced in our brain uh, that's called dimethyltryptamine or DMT for short. And this compound is actually released when we're dreaming at nighttime when we're sleeping. And what's really interesting about it, the uh, hyperspace is basically defined as three spatial dimensions, but there's no time dimension. So essentially everything exists all in one point in space. So that's why when you get into it, there's no actual structure or form, but as you go into it and you develop your senses, you start to be able to detect and understand where you are and what's happening. Ah. And what's interesting, we go into this place every nighttime while we're sleeping. So our brain waves do these cycles to process our memories and to free up this energy that we've stored, you know, throughout the day from the experiences we've gone through. And we have this brainwave cycle as a beta, alpha, theta, delta, and there's actually a second beta, which completes it as a circuit. 
So as enough energy is getting completed in this circuit, it generates a new type of brain wave called a gamma wave. And the gamma wave is what produces this dimethyltryptamine. And that's what makes you dream. So if you've ever been in that point, you know, when you're waking up in the morning, like, oh, no, I'm not getting up yet. And you hit the snooze button. And next thing you know, you're in this huge dream that's lasting hours or even days. And then you're like, oh, I got to get up. And you wake up from your dream and it's only been one or two minutes later. But you've just lived like days or weeks, you know, yeah. in this dream. And you're like, okay, I got lots of time. You close your eyes. You're back in the same dream. And all of a sudden, you know, hours and days have passed again. You open your eyes and it's still only another minute later. Well, that's that space where there's there's three space dimensions but no time dimension. Um, except we're not really conscious there. So when this compound releases in a very high quantity, that's actually what generates the out-of-body experiences, the near-death experiences. And what does it is a massive surge of impact to the body. So a lot of people who they get into car accidents or get into like a really stream uh, type of illness or um, not usually an illness, but usually the impact, the car accidents are a really big one or uh, electricity, you know, getting struck by lightning causes yeah. a lot of them. And it's because all this energy gets surged into the body and your nervous system picks it up, brings it up to the brain and it spikes your energy levels so high that it generates these gamma waves. And these gamma waves produce the, di uh, the dimethyltryptamine, which is this energy surge through the body, and it actually picks you up, lifts you out of body, and gives you your near-death experience. Wow. So are you saying there's no no such thing as a near-death experience? Uh, no, this is just the process to take you out of body. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So it takes you out of body. So, so uh, It's like the science of the near-death experience. Okay. For like the mechanics so, for how it happens. Okay. Thank you. All right. So when uh, when I'd go through that process and I'd feel my body all shutting down and I'd go through that like extreme terror of my body's dying, um, that would kick in the amount of energy that was required to spike those levels in my brain and start producing the dimethyltryptamine. And that's what would activate my body um, when I was when I was coming back out of it. So I kind of look at it as like my whole brain, you know, like a Windows computer and you get too many windows open, everything starts to slow down. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're like trying to click and it's taken five minutes for that little spinning ball <laughs> to, to go away. And eventually you just have to reset your computer. Well, that's that's exactly what was happening with my brain. It would just get way too much stuff that was active at once because the memory couldn't stabilize it. And it would essentially just reset my brain. But when it reset my brain, all this surge of energy would come in and it would last from anywhere from like four to, you know, four to 12 hours. Wow. And I'd be uh, I'd be stuck in this state, you know, but it was great. I mean, the state was amazing. <laughs> well, can you teach other people how to get into this state? Um, yeah, well, there's I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. One of the most common ways uh there's a doctor, Rick Strassman, who wrote a book called DMT, The Spirit Molecule. And this is what really helped me to understand what was going on in my brain and kind of piece everything together. And uh, he basically did research on what this compound is. And he got uh, approval from the uh, FDA to be able to do these tests. And so what they did was they started injecting people full of uh, this dimethyltryptamine. And it would give them instant out-of-body experiences. And all of a sudden, they're in this other dimension. They're interacting with these like multi-dimensional alien-type characters. Um, some of them are on operating tables getting their body worked on. Others are, um, you know, in like this uh, almost like in, a, in their own orb, you know, in their own energy field. But they can hear like three-dimensional sound like bouncing off all the walls and bouncing through the geometry. And... If you don't get enough of this compound, what ends up happening is you get into this like color engine where it's just colors and shapes morphing in and out of each other. And it's just like a never ending pattern of these geometrical colors. And so I'd actually go through that every single time uh, before I broke through. And, um, you know, eventually you break through, you go into the light, but the light is a portal. And as soon as you get to the other side, it's like everything becomes light, but then you stabilize with it. And that's where you start to see what's on the other side. And that's, that's like, uh, um, that's like the hyperspace dimension is when you're in that, um, middle world. So there's, there's two different types of hyperspace. One is when you leave your body 
and you become emerged in this realm of possibility. It's like the imagination, you create your imagination as you focus and there's no limit to it, but it's a completely interactive three-dimensional experience where your imagination, which by the way, is way bigger than what you're consciously aware of, starts to generate all of these images. You see life reviews, you get into different uh, experiences of your life and what you didn't understand. And all of a sudden your brain's like teaching you why things happen. And so that's one uh, form of hyperspace. And that's where you actually leave the body. And typically that's when you get this dimethyltryptamine from an external source. And so when it comes from an external source, you know, through an injection or you're smoking it, when you smoke it, it goes into your lungs, which goes into your blood, which hits your cells. It activates your cells and your neuroreceptors pick it up, carry that information up to the brain. And that's what takes you out of body. Now, there's a different type of dimethyltryptamine that's actually produced from spiking these gamma levels in your brain first. And when you do, it sends those signals down through the body and the dimethyltryptamine is actually released out of the terminals into the cells themselves. And what that does is that activates the body. And so instead of going up and out of body into this imaginary space, you actually come down into the body and it's a way to bring the spirit like fully into the body. And so that's what activates the higher senses, what the human body's capable of. So I go into spaces where I could close my eyes and I could see my own 3D body and it would like spin around and there was like all these options on the side. I could pick eyes, hair, hair color, eye color, skin color, muscles, height, weight, uh, body size. And I could go in and morph and change my body any which way I wanted to make it look. And so I'm right in there doing this. And I'm like, oh, my God, I could, like, pick the ultimate body, right? I'm (laughs) freaking out. And I go to hit the enter button, which is basically to make it a reality. And this button doesn't go down. And all of a sudden, I hear this cosmic laughter. And it's like, (laughs) and then all of a sudden, I feel myself come out. And it's like, and all of a sudden, I'm back in my room. And I'm like, what was that? And I look in the mirror. And I'm like, in my normal body, I'm like, no. (laughs) But what was cool was it was the actual like it was the actual like internal software and programming that's stored inside the human body for what's actually possible and capable. And but so, but spirit won't let you fool no. around with that. <laughs> no, so it showed me what was possible, but it wouldn't let me like hit the buttons to make it a reality. I'm like, you can't just do something like that to somebody. I mean, that's like teasing them with everything that they could ever possibly want and then oh. going, oh, wait, oh, you don't have access to push this last button. Oh, never do that to a woman. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty intense. And then I went through another one of those where they were actually, they took me into the full scope of the world and then they, they zoomed me down from outside the planet um, into eventually I got into my bedroom where I was, where the experience was happening. And uh, they're showing me in my bedroom. I've got my eyes closed. And they're like, well, what would you like to do? And I'm like, well, maybe we should put a TV in here. And all of a sudden, there's like, it's almost like the Matrix where they brought in big shelves of guns, you know. But this one was like, they started showing me all these TVs. And I'm like, well, I like this one. And as soon as I picked one, they're like, well, here's a whole bunch of variations of that one. And I picked a few layers in. And then I got the one they're like, I'm like, yeah, I like that one. Okay, perfect. And they're like, well, you're going to need a stand for it. So they took me through and showed me different stands. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I like that one. I picked that. And they're like, well, where do you want to put it now? So they show me the room and they're actually positioning the TV in all these different areas of the room. And then so I set it down in the one area and they're like, okay, perfect. You got that set up. Now here's your button. And I go to hit it and it doesn't go down again. And I get this same cosmic laughter. And I'm like, but that was the integration of all of this programming into reality. But there's full like virtual systems set up and like pre-designed. This was back in like 1996, 1997. Video games hadn't evolved to this point yet. Um, you know, there but, was. But wait a minute, go back. It's it's a pre-program of reality so that it's setting you up to create that in your in your life. Yeah, except it's not just like this was all like an instantaneous system. So as soon as that button would have went down, I would have opened my eyes and it would have been right there. But it's not allowing you to push that button so that you have to use action. Um, Why didn't it let you? I want to know why it didn't let you push that button. Well, because it wasn't, I didn't have the actual like full access to the system. 
So it's their systems that already exist. It's capabilities that are stored in our body. It's already all preset. It's built inside of us. Um, and the body's generating this reality anyways. And soon, as soon as you can get into these layers of coding, all you do is you hit the button, you open your eyes and bam, it's right there. And so I was like, wow, like, what is this place? I'm going to like solve everything that this place possibly has, you know, has, I, you know, I want to be able to actually push that button instead of running just these simulations to show me what was possible. And so I was like, I'm going to like, I'm going to get into energy. So in this place, all my senses are active. My hands function automatically. I can take my eyes and look up here and my hand shoots over here. And I take my eyes and I look over here. My hand shoots over here, but this one drops. So I started learning that as soon as my eyes passed this halfway point where this one was coming up and I looked past it, this one would drop because as soon as you pass this uh, point, you know, right in the center of your body, well, then you use this hand. And so if I'd look real far, then my hips would pivot. And if I looked even further with my eyes, my body, like my legs would start to turn. But it was like my body was moving by itself, and all I had to do was focus my eyes on what I wanted. So as soon as I moved my eyes up, my hand would go up. As soon as I moved them down, my hand would go down. And I'd come up this way, and this one would go up, and this one would drop. So it was like uh, everything was linked up to my eyeballs, and all I had to actually do was move my eyes, and the rest of my body would just go. So I, like, turned right to the side with my eyes, and then my head would turn. And it, I'd just keep my eyes, and I'd just sit there and spin. I'd just spin circles for, like, minutes, and then I'd, like, switch my eyes, and they would spin circles the other but my body was like so automatic that I was running my entire body just with my eyes. And, uh, you know, then I'd focus on something and my hand would go to it. And then I'd like pull back and my fingers would pick it up and it'd lift it up and like demonstrate it for me. And I was like, whoa, and put it back down. But everything was run through my eyes and through like focus. So like every system inside my body was linked up with my eyes. And the first thing I started thinking about was that could be really dangerous driving, you know, especially if there's some pretty girl drive walking down the street and my <laughs> eyes turn and all of a sudden the car turns. I'm like, that could be pretty dangerous, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, the, like the human things you think about when you're in like these states and they're like showing you like this grand system and I like break it down to like this, this simple, like <laughs> funny. Because you're still here. human. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> like how's that work you know you got you guys got the out one figured out yet <laughs> <laughs> so um these experiences have never stopped i uh you know i've got over a thousand hours um inside this space and uh, if you close your eyes within about five minutes you can live about a 15 year life so they walk me through um, psychological development patterns that people go through, character creations. They'd show me how one belief system or one type of action step would spiral out. And they'd show me, you know, uh, they'd take parts of my life, things that I did and created an action. And then they'd show me how it affected the person who I took that action from. And if it was a negative impact, it would take that action and they'd pass it on to somebody else and they'd pass it on and all of a sudden it would start spreading. Core, it was almost, core yeah. who's, who's they? Who is they? Uh, it was like the intelligence of this, of this energy. And I guess they in the end would just simply be the body because it was the body generating all of these experiences. And it was showing me like the psychology and the characteristics of how it all worked. Okay. So I guess gay uh, or they would be essentially the body. But and your it, higher I, self? Yeah. And uh, eventually I learned they'd like, you know, instead of just energy and realizations and interacting, um, as my visuals developed, they actually started to become people who would interact with me. And so I essentially call them a council. At the time, I called them the gods and goddesses um, because they had more light than I did. But what I found was they had more light because they stored information that I didn't have. And when I saw them as greater beings, it was like, oh, well, you know about these things, teach me. And so sometimes they'd come into my body and uh, my eyes would all of a sudden hallucinate and they'd show me what I was seeing out here so my hands could interact with like 3D objects. Um, they were holographic, um, but my hands would, uh, you know, interact with them. I could see it, the same object inside my head, but in a whole new environment. Yeah. And they'd speak through me and they'd I'd listen to what I was saying and then I'd ask questions and then they'd speak through my mouth and answer them. Wow. So they're actually like council systems. And... Uh, but what and, I, and they're the ones that, that downloaded the sacred G to you? 
yeah yeah they, they they taught me the sacred g and like mechanics of the body i got to go through the the human body as an actual mo water molecule and what happens from the time you drink water to becoming one mo water molecule and being transferred and picked up and transported um, through the body and into cells and then like working inside the cells and when you get into the cells there's all these different types of creatures and body types and uh, we'd look at them as like they were aliens, but I kind of just saw them as though these are actual microorganisms, except they're not just this tiny little weird looking shape. You know, it's an actual body type and the body types were all customized for like the job that they were doing. Uh -huh. So some had eight arms because they were doing very interactive stuff where other ones had more like wings because they were doing stuff like up above the ground yeah. but it was like seeing life from their perspective not from our perspective where we look down and they're just a little blob and so i was like well, wait a sec if they look down we're just a little blob i mean all we're really actually seeing is their energy field and their shell but we don't see the actual nucleus of it and what they look like ah. And so that started giving me keys into, well, you know, this is our nucleus and we have these energy fields as a shell. So what do we look like to somebody else? And so then my, you know, those were all the right questions. So my body starts taking me in deeper and deeper. And next thing you know, I'm like, um, you know, I become just an atom or just a unit of space. And I'm inside the atom and I, I call it atomic consciousness because you can feel all these circular fields around your body. And next thing you know, I like it's like I come out of this or I focus even more into the atom, into me, into who I am. But it was like I was coming out of an area of the body and I could feel myself come out of, you know, it was actually but like my lower uh, stomach. I could feel myself come out of there and basically come right back into this body so I could detect where I was inside my body. Wow. And that was a that was a pretty neat experience because it was like it was like the loop system. Wow. So so cuz we're running out of time I want uh, tell us what the sacred G which is right behind you tell us what that does to the average show me what does having that because I know that you can place that underneath the bed you can place it on in the car you can place it anywhere and yep. what does that do to the energy around us well, uh, Sacred G technology is designed to neutralize a lot of the negative effects of electromagnetic fields from light, from sound, from all these different vibrational uh, technologies, and it puts us into our own energy. And so when people start opening up to energy and they can feel it and sense it, it starts to drive them and move them. And so a lot of people interpret that as, you know, I'm running off this energy and that's that spiritual form and source is guiding me. But what exactly is source? And so that's where I started to break down. Well, source is really just pure energy, but there's no such thing as pure energy. There's vibrational energy and all energy has these vibrational imprints. So the majority of instructions that we get when we're running off energy comes from electricity and power lines and the electromagnetic spectrum. And power lines are essentially set up to take us out of our body and put us into our head. And they're the primary reason why the whole world went into the information age, why information is valued more so than people, because it puts us into our head rather than into our body. And so once you start opening up with energy, you get bombarded with all these different signals and all these different instructions that you're supposed to do. But what's happening, your brain is also sending electromagnetic sig signals down from your body through your nervous system. And when your nerve ending hits a cell to make you move, it also emits a tiny little electromagnetic field that goes into your DNA and it feeds your DNA instructions for what you want to create for yourself. And that's really the essence of the law of attraction. But what's interesting about our time is because we have all these electromagnetic fields around us, they're actually going in and hitting our cells as well, which is feeding instructions, but they're not our instructions. So we're not running off ourselves as a source. We're, we're actually getting feedback from the environment that's not necessarily beneficial for us. So we're following that energy. We're going with it. But a lot of times those instructions collapse our life. And we think that that's a no very normal or a, a, a typical thing for somebody who's actually opening up. But... 
it's because of the vibrational instructions that's coming from our environment. So when you start sleeping on a technology, it basically eliminates all of those systems. So really, you're just inside yourself. You're inside your own goals. So the law of attraction is basically you're focusing your thoughts, which are coming down through the nervous system, hitting your cells, changing your DNA and what your DNA is producing for amino acids and shifting the cellular chemistry and your body chemistry, which shifts your emotional state and realigns your thoughts with what you want. And that allows you to move forward and take action. So as soon as we got all these other signals, though, it causes this distortion. And so the law of attraction can't work the same way that it did 100 years ago because of our environment. Wow. So essentially, the technology goes in there, stabilizes all these fields. So you're just in your own field. That way you can run off your source and your higher consciousness. And that's what starts to lead you through the energy. And that's what gets rid of all the distortion. All of a sudden, your whole life starts to take this big turn. Now, if you can't run off energy or, or anything, well, we've developed uh, an entire energy training school. Uh, there's an energy course, which we're actually just about to launch. Um, it's a, It was a not live six-month course. There's 88 hours of video. We teach how to get into energy like, like nobody has ever seen before. Um, and then we also have the uh, Love University, which has three different modules. One of them is the Breath of Love, which focuses into the psychology. It teaches you how to go into the brain, identify brain waves. You can clear um, any charges from any memories. And so it really depends on what type of energy that you want to activate. So if you want act more energy in your friendships, you go into your friendships and you process that energy. We process negative charges. We also process positive charges, which very, very few people even are aware of. But it's the positive charges that actually heal the body. Negative charges expand the mind, so we get this big global vision. So if you talk to a lot of light workers and healers, they, everybody has this huge vision, but nobody has this practical application to ground it or the energy to make that happen. And that's because they process the negative charges, but not the positive ones. Interesting. Yeah, so if you process the positive charges, that activates the body, it heals the body, and it gives you all the detailed logical steps to be able to take action, and it gives you that energy for it. We also go in, we don't only just process ourselves, but we also process the others, the other people who are inside of our memories, which very, very few people understand as well. Now, if you think back to, uh, you know, say you were young and your uh, mom and your dad didn't really know how to deal with situations, so they just yelled at you all the time. You can go in and clear yourself from all this healing, from this verbal abuse, but three to six months later, if you go back into those memories, you have all that emotion and charge back in there because in your memories, your parents are still yelling at you. So when you go in and you clear your parents as well, they're convert, that energy is converted. They're no longer yelling at you. Those charges don't replace inside of you. So there's actually two parts to it. You have to clear yourself and the others. And what's interesting, when you clear the others, that's what opens up your internal counsel systems. So people who've opened up their ability to hear opened up this coaching system, which exists in your parietal occipital and temporal lobes or a combination of the three. People who've opened that up through some type of trauma, their thoughts attack them. And when their thoughts attack them, it's because they've opened up this higher sense, but through a trauma and they haven't gone into the trauma and actually cleared the charges. So when you go in and you clear yourself and the others, instead of your thoughts attacking you, next thing you know, you're on the treadmill running and you're like, oh, I can't handle anymore. And your brain kicks in and says, yes, you can. You can do it. One more minute. Let's keep going. Or something gets hard in your life and you're like, I don't know if I can make yeah. it. And your brain kicks in and says, yes, you can. I believe in you. Look at all these memories where you succeeded before. And your brain actually starts coaching you. And those are actually all the, the counsel systems systems that I saw visually generated in that high energy state. So they're actually all inside of us. And brilliant. Brilliant. So there's um, there's all different types of activations, whether you want to boost your business, get into your life legacy and identify your passion, whether you want to rebuild relationships that have kind of grown stagnant. We use uh, this memory system called the tree of love, which kind of looks like the Kabbalah, except there's a couple extra chakras inside of it. And uh, with this tree of love, when you understand it, it, it matches your actual body. So it says our body is the core. But when you understand it, it reveals your 23 chromosomes, how your brain stores different types of memory in the chromosomes. Friendships are a different memory system than relationships, which are a different memory system than family. So you can actually go into any of these different memory systems and you can recode not only yourself, but also the others. And the others is how people are trained to interact with you. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're in a relationship and you notice that you constantly get that same type of relationship or an abusive relationship, which is hard to get past, you can go in, clear the other person who's abusive. That way your next relationship, when you bring them in, they don't have to play that part for you anymore because it's not programmed in your fields anymore. So you can you can shift your entire reality. It's absolutely phenomenal. Wow, this is so cool. And I know all of the listeners are asking, okay, where do I go? Where do I go? I got to find out more. So you want to go to corelove.com. That's C-O-R-E-L-O-V-E.com. You got to go there to check out everything. And I truly haven't been there a while, but... I, I am going to uh, go and spend some time there because, you know, <laughs> I need it. I need it. I'm, I'm raring to go. Cor, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on and, and just bringing all this wonderful knowledge to us. It's been Aww. fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You'll uh, you'll love the site. There's a bunch there. We're just setting up all the actual like bonuses and gifts and everything to help people get started on the site right now. And uh, there's there's just there's so much. There's about 400 hours of video that we've put together onto that site to help people open up and understand what's happening in the world and. And we really break it down just back to the body and, and give people the tools and technologies to open themselves up and stabilize their life and really have that success that they're looking for and build their legacy. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to just come here and share what we have going on. So I want you to come back and tell us what is going on in the world right now, why we are seeing this. And real fast, are we, we're in the midst of this shift, yep. shift of consciousness that that's part of it right oh yeah yeah the bodies are evolving um kids, our dna our dna yeah. is changing uh you know they're on the body's unlocking higher levels of awareness that people's brains are processing more information faster they're seeing a greater um, range of information and uh, we have specialists coming through people with higher senses and abilities that are turning on and uh, really that's everything that we've been building is kind of almost like that X-Men school where we, uh, you know, we know all the senses, the abilities, the regions of the brain that they're being activated in. We've got tools, techniques, technologies to stabilize them um, as well as to enhance and open and activate their senses even further. Oh, and uh, wow. it's all broken down to an absolute science in the human brain and body. So it's a uh, it's it a great time to be alive, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for everything you do. And, and I'm so glad that you came forward to share this wonderful information with everybody. It's changing the world. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to, uh, to definitely coming back to talk about that next. <laughs> that you next got topic. it. You got it. Thanks so much, Corey. And to all my wonderful listeners out there, we'll be back next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for sharing your energy with us today. We will be back with another great show next week on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you would like to see a video of this broadcast, go to LOARadioNetwork.com forward slash jewels dot html or send an email to jewels at LOARadioNetwork.com. <laughs>